Hi, my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Salian Consulting and this is another video for Unboxing FileMaker 14. In this video I'm going to focus on conditionally formatting glyphs and really how those can help highlight what's important. So here we have a simple dashboard. I imagine this could have other things on the layout, but this is a place where as a user it'd be great to log into the database and just get an overview of what's going on that day or what's on my plate, that kind of stuff. So the idea is that these different icons tell me the count of reminders and documents and favorites that I have. Let me just jump into layout mode real quick. And let me take a look at one of these buttons here. So these buttons currently don't do anything, but let me just show you how they're set up. I created a button. I went ahead and set it up so that the glyph was at the top, the text on the bottom. And then I just went ahead and chose the glyph that I liked for this specific button, which in this case is documents. Again, it doesn't do anything, but we could definitely change that. Really, this is a very straightforward button, nothing too crazy. But where the magic happens is with this button here, I'm going to set these values. Again, for the demo, I'm just setting these numbers to something arbitrary. But in a real world example, your database on startup would somehow capture what's on somebody's plate. You could do execute SQL to go out and grab some information. You could do some finds. There are all kinds of ways to do it. But at the end of the day, I'm setting three global variables to something that will represent the number of reminders, the number of documents, and the number of favorites. So when I click set to values, again, randomly setting it to two, seven, and four here, but you'll notice that the glyphs themselves actually changed colors. Now this might not seem like a huge deal, but it actually makes FileMaker just that much more advanced and that much more customizable. And really having this icon change color, it really makes the point of the color change more dramatic and it makes it more visible to the user. Jumping back into layout mode, you might have caught this when I showed it earlier, but basically I have a variable called count rem for reminders, count doc for documents, and count fav for favorites. My script is setting those values to different numbers. Again, presumably that would be related to your data. And then based on that logic, I'm using conditional formatting to change the color of the icon. So I'm going to right click here and go to conditional formatting. And the formula here is very simple. If the count is greater than one, so here it actually requires that the reminders be more than one, so I'd have to have at least two. Uh, I could make it greater than zero if I wanted to. And then I'm choosing to change the text color because I want the word reminder to be red, as well as the icon color. And all three of these are very similar. They just happen to be using different colors. So you'll see it's the count is greater than one here and then the different colors. So you can imagine that's the number of documents I need to sign or the number of reminders for tasks on my to-do list, that kind of thing. So I think that just bringing a little bit of color to a layout can really draw a user's attention, which is in a lot of cases exactly what you're looking to do. Now there's another example where I really like this and that's for a progress bar. So imagine having a wizard or some type of layout where you're basically walking your user through a process and they need to complete multiple steps. So here in this example, I have four steps. They need to enter the client info. They need to enter the product info. They need to take a product photo and then they need to print the report. You can imagine that this would be customizable in a hundred different ways. You might have multiple steps. You might have different layouts they go to, or maybe it's different slide controls. Again, tons and tons of ways to set this up. In this case, I am going to stay on this layout. So let's assume there's a slide control on here, or maybe they're filling out different fields or different parts of the database. So steps complete. So here I have a field it's called steps complete. And basically I'm going to check off which step is done. So if step one gets done, then it turns to green. If step two gets done, it also turns to green and so on. So I think that's really nice because if I were to walk away from this record and come back, I would know just how far I've made it through the process. So again, from a visual perspective, it's quick, it's easy, and it tells me everything I need to know. Now to take it one step further, what if we did it with error messages? So let's say I walk through the process and then maybe there's some type of script that runs at the end or even throughout the process, you know, as the steps are getting completed, where it checks for errors. So let's say there's a required field in product info. The user says, I'm done with this step. Maybe you prompt them right at that moment and say, hey, something needs to be done, but maybe you don't. Maybe you wait until the end of the process. Either one would be fine. But here we've added some conditional formatting to add an extra layer of visibility to the user as to what's going on. So if I hit this number two here, again, another field that's called steps error. And what it does is it basically says that there's an error on step two. Now, again, I'm clicking boxes here, but this would be useful for some type of progress bar where your script is actually populating these boxes as it goes through the process. 
So if there's an error on step two and step three, you'll see that both of those change to red. I can imagine that these would be clickable. You click on the button and it takes you right to the field or it takes you right to the section that needs to be fixed, but it can really draw attention to the right place and can make it a lot easier for your user to enter data accurately, efficiently, and really they can just navigate much faster than having to navigate through more traditional FileMaker ways. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to Saliant TV and follow us on the Unboxing FileMaker 14 series. Thank you so much.